Copyrighted program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Welcome to police calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 103. The owner looked out for one James Batson, alias the Bullet. This guy is 35 years, 5 feet 10 inches, 180 pounds, has a broken nose, right ear cauliflower. This man is suspected. I'm following the murder of his own wife. That's all. Rose and Rose. This is a big month for calling all cars. As we start our third year on the air... The Rio Grande Oil Company celebrates its 20th birthday and entered on the 21st and biggest year in its history. Twenty years ago, this company was refining kerosene for lamps down on the banks of the Rio Grande River. Today, it is recognized as the fastest growing oil company in the West. This is proved by the recently released state figures on taxable gasoline sales. Growing Rio Grande sales increased twice that of its nearest competitors. In no other gasoline can motorists enjoy the advantages of the patented Sinclair cracking process. That additional refining method that makes Rio Grande cracks more powerful, more economical, and so much speedier than uncracked gasoline. The superiority of Rio Grande cracked gasoline made by the patented Sinclair cracking process is proved by the enthusiastic endorsement of such particular buyers as the cities of Los Angeles, Oakland, Berkeley, Marysville, San Diego County, and Maricopa County, Arizona. These and many other western cities and counties have honored Rio Grande Crack Gasoline by selecting it, and above all others, to power more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, motorcycles, and other emergency equipment than any other brand. These broadcasts are calling all cars based on the deeds of police officers who use Rio Grande Crack gasoline have induced thousands of motors to drive at independent service stations for the same crack gasoline that police cars use. We invite you to to enjoy the thrill of police car performance. And now it is our pleasure to present Chief James E. Davis of the Los Angeles Police Department. Chief Davis. Good evening, friends. You have heard me repeat many times on this program the duty of your policeman to prevent crime before it occurs, as well as to bring the criminals to justice after a crime has been committed. This is not the idle voicing of an unattainable ideal. Our files contain many cases in which the crime has never occurred because of the alert work of the police in presenting it. Your policeman is just as interested in keeping you out of jail as putting you in. He is just as interested in discovering your innocence as he is in determining your guilt. He is, in the final analysis, interested in only one thing, and that is the fact of the case. Tonight, Calling All Cars dramatizes a case in point where the homicide squad function to the fullest in the prevention of a crime. The facts are authentic. The names, for reasons which will be readily apparent, have been changed. But the moral of the story has not been changed. Nothing can change the unalterable, eternal truth, the fact that crime does not pay. Tonight, Calling All Cars is honored to present as its guest star, the famous star of stage and screen, Charles Dickson. 
Mr. Bigfoot, making his first public appearance since his near escape from death at the hands of an enraged lion during the filming of East of Java, will be heard on tonight's broadcast in the role of Buckeye Bryan, the man who accepts an invitation to murder. <laughs> Our story tonight opens at the State House of Bullet Baskin, ex prize fighter. And Baskin is putting a couple of diners at good night. Yeah. Well, Miss Watson, enjoy your dinner? Yeah, I certainly did. I was just telling the Mr. Watson there's no place like Bullet Baskin for steak. That's yes, right, well, I agree. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, no one in this part of the country has better meat than you, Baskin. Hey, thanks a lot. Come again, will you? Yes, <laughs> yeah, well. yeah, let me hold the door open for you. Thank you, Mr. Baskin. Good night. Good night. Mind holding the door open for me? What the devil? I told you not to come here, Flo. I know, I know. But I got some news for you, Sugar. Yeah, but you should have called me. I'll listen, Bullet. I have to see you. See, it's been so long, almost the whole day now. All right, all right, not so loud. Come on over here in this corner, Booth, and don't be conspicuous. There. Sit over there. What's the idea? You're ashamed to me? No, but I, I don't want Mildred to get wise. You sound like you're afraid of that, Dan. She's only your wife. Please be quiet, will you? Sometimes I get disgusted with you. Bullet fast and the former middleweight champion tied to the apron strings of a dame. Why don't you give me something to respect? All right, bro. Don't give me that again unless you're aching for a smack on the kisser. Ah, oh, Daddy, that's more like it. You would smack me too, wouldn't you? You bet I would. Gives me chills up my spine just to think of it. All right, count ten on that, too. What's in your mind? I got it. I got it today. You got what makes sense? I got my divorce. I'm free, white, and almost 21. Yeah, well. From the site you know? I'm yours, Daddy, all yours. Nobody can take me from you now. Yeah, that's swell. Aren't you glad? Sure, sure, I'm glad. How about you? When you get me your divorce? Uh... I don't know. I, I've got to go easy. What do you mean, go easy? Well, you know how Mildred is. You can't spin things on a toothpick. Mildred. You can't spin things on a toothpick. Mildred, Mildred, Mildred. I'm sick of that name. So you ain't been kidding me all this time, have you? No, no, I'm on the level. I, I just got to go slow. What do you mean, go slow? Well, look. What do you mean, go slow? Well, look, slow. It ain't as easy as you giving your husband a drink. Everything I got, my house, the restaurant here, everything in, everything come out of that legacy from Mildred's old man. If I just go ahead and dish her like you want me to, I, I won't have a red cent of my name. I gotta be careful. Listen, Bullet. I love you, see. I'm your woman, and nobody else has got a right to touch my little fingers. The same goes for you. You're my man. And I'm my man. And I'm gonna have you no matter what. Yeah, that's swell, but they're still Mildred. Well. There won't be no good very long. What do you mean? Just this. No good's gonna commit suicide. What? And you're gonna pull the trigger on the gun. So you're going now. No, no, I'm not. How do you suppose I got rid of my first husband, the one before Eddie? The paper called it suicide. So did the coroner, but... Well, you listen to me, Daddy. It's simple. Here's the way you do it. Right, I forgot. I'm going to hang a wrap on my head, then. Just hang it. 
break it open, see if it's loaded. Yeah, it's loaded. The slug in it. You'll only need one mask and just one slug, and then you're all set. Yeah. Windows closed, worth it. You worth it? No, no, I'm worth it. Come on, mask and six steps to the bedroom door. Open it. Three more steps to the bed. Hold the gun close to her head for the sea powder burn so it'll look like suicide. Come on, Bascom, come on. Remember the night? Yeah. Well, let's go on. Oh, to the head. Stop oh. waking up. Take the trigger now. No, no, I can't. You stop. Why do you the man? Oh, better wake up. Kill her now. Standing there with that gun in your hand. Huh? What? Is something wrong? No, no, no. Nothing's wrong. I was just cleaning it. Oh, come on to bed and clean it in the morning. Oh, it's not me. Gun? Yeah, I don't know. One thirty or so. Well, where have you been so long? Oh, uh, Jack Sneed and some of the boys got into the place. I, I sat around. Jack Sneed, he needs some dough. If you haven't got the nerve, get him to do it. It's better, boy. It's better. You're just better. I can't. Jack Sneed. Find the wrist after to be hanging around with until all hours in the morning. Come on to bed, darling. I'm cold. Yeah, honey. This is I put the gun away. You've got to go. I can. Just me. 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 That lady over there wants Melba Post and Strange Spinach. Yeah, we ain't got it. Ain't on the menu. I know that. I told her so. But she says, what is this? A first-class restaurant or ain't it? Tell her the closest we can come to Strange Spinach is a B. Luke hamburger. Yes, sir. And um, wait a minute. Take care of this customer. Yes, sir. Can I show you a table, sir? No, I'm looking for it. Oh, hello, Post. Hello, oh, Strange. The boy saying he was looking for me. Yeah. Let's sit down in this booth here. Sure. Yeah, lunch, Jack? No, as a matter of fact, there ain't. How'd you like a nice New York cut steak? Can't think of nothing better. That's fine. Tell her. Yes, sir? New York cut for Mr. Sneed. On a plank. How you like a Jack medium? Well, or what? Rare. Rare with the blood oozing out of it. Yeah. That's the way I like to hear you talk, Jack. And tell her. Yes, sir? Bring Mr. Sneed an old-fashioned. And that bonded stuff. The big one is here, Bullet. Last night when I took you for a thing, you gave me the gold bar. Now you're setting me up to a swell face. Forget it. How are you feeling? Me? Not so good. They're policing the track at Santa Anita, so darn close they can't make a decent snatch. Joe Filkus is out there spotting tips, and a self respecting mob buzzer like me can't make himself three square. Try to reap a kick in you in the back field for a sleep. Yeah, you that stuff. Sure. And do you think I can do any good with the junk? Boy, Eddie Titwood has got a fink at every corner, looking like a snowbird dying at the equator. Proposition those mugs and it's up the river. Uh, it ain't up the river, Jack. It's across the bay. It's still got East Coast hangovers. I wish I had any sort of a hangover. I ain't had a drink in 60 years. Well, that problem's settled. It comes the old-fashioned. Oh, and how I welcome it. Thanks, Curly. Here's how, Bullet. How? Oh. Boy, oh, that's good. You sure treat me white, Bullet? No, no, not at all. Come on. What's on your mind? What do you mean? What do you want to see me about? I'd like to mention Joe. But I've been telling you. Where is it? I commit murder for a car, Buck. You mean that? Mean what? That you commit murder. Well, almost. Would you put a little bump off for, say, a hundred bucks? What? That's what I wanted to see you about. Are you nuts, Bullet? I know what I'm talking about. I want you to bump off... Mildred. Mildred? Yeah. Who's this way, Jack? You double-crossing me. You shooting. Mildred? Why, you, you're crazy, Bullet. Mildred's nuts about you. No, Jim. I've been having a shot I know what I'm talking about. It don't seem possible. Well, it's true. And I'm going to put up with it. I'm going to get rid of her right now. All right, here comes your waitress. Here you are, sir. Is that rare enough? Yes, right. Okay, fella, that's all. Well, how about it, Jack? You're going to need a lot of sticks for a hundred bucks. But you know this. Why, Bullet, I know her almost as well as I know you. She's a friend of mine. Forget it. This is a business deal. Do you want to make yourself a century or not? But, Bullet, I... Oh, I see. A hundred bucks ain't enough. Okay, make it two hundred. How about that? Yeah, but 
Don't you see? I'll go to the pen for it. Oh, no, you won't. It'll make it look like robbery, not suicide. That's silly. What's that about suicide? Oh, nothing, nothing. Uh, no, make it look like robbery, and nobody will be wise. There's a steel bar in the closet of the house. I'll give you the key, and you just walk in and count her over the head. <laughs> Just for you, Daddy. When will you have a chair? What do you mean? Just this. When's no good committing suicide? I'm taking care of that. You're taking care of it. You heard me now. Quit asking questions. I'll smack you on. Oh, Daddy. Come on. That's neat. How about it? You ready to pull the tip this afternoon? Uh, I don't know. What do you mean, you don't know? Just give me a drink, will you pull it out? That's a kid. Okay. Got a couple of stocks and thirties. Yes, sir. Now, what's the matter with you? I can't go through with a bullet. Well, you yellow. Oh, now, wait a minute, bullet. Don't take that attitude. I know Mildred too well. She's a friend of mine. I couldn't bump her off. I just couldn't. You're walking out on me, are you? Why, well, I had to burn you in a Now, car. wait a minute, bullet. I ain't walking out on you. I'll get it done for you. You'll get it done for me? What are you talking about? Listen, bullet. I ran into an old pal of mine today. Guy I was in the Marines with in China. Name's Buckeye Bryan. Buckeye on account he comes from Ohio. Yeah, yeah. Now, look, Buckeye's a hood. The real McCoy. He's a chopper with a mob back in Toledo. He don't know you, and he don't know Mildred. He'll do the job for you, and no questions asked. I need to do him myself, but I can't bump off a friend, sir. How do I know this ain't a double cross? It ain't bullet. I swear it. If you want to get Mildred bumped off, it ain't on my conscience, it's on yours. But if I bumped her off, it'd be on mine, see? Much as I need to go, I don't need it that bad. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to talk to this Buckeye Brian. I'll have him here in a couple of hours. He's a great guy for us. Uh... Hello, Mr. This here is Buckeye Bryan. Buckeye, this is Bullock Baxter. Glad to know you, Baxter. Pleased to meet you, Bryan. Have a seat. Sure. Would you like a drink? Great. Sell a couple of state whiskeys and bring over the bottle. Yes, sir. Well, I'll be seeing you later, Bullock. What? I don't want to know anything about this. Uh, goodbye, Bullock. What you doing? Taking a powder? No, Bullock. I'm on the up and up. Only, why should I listen in on this? I'll see you uh, after. Mm. Sometimes I think that guy's a pink fool, Jack. Why, Jack Sneed's the whitest guy that ever joined Uncle Sam's Devil Dog. Now, Bastion, let me tell you about the time when we were in China together. Hey, Why? whiskey, sir. Oh, yeah, thanks. Have a, have a taste of brand? Not me. I like it straight. Fair enough. Me too. Hmm, good stuff. My prohibition stuff. They can't make it that good since we're two. <laughs> yeah, that prohibition stuff, I'm a copper. Maybe you are. What? Say, listen, Bastion. How are we going to do business if you hand me that kind of jelly? I'm on the level. Did me tell you what I wanted to talk to you about? You said you had a job you want to pull. I tried to tell you what. You tell me. Okay. It's murder. Murder? Like the advertisements say, that's a nasty word. Let's say bump off. Now, then tell her what you like. You ever, you ever done anything like it before? Look, Bastion, here's my gap. See those notches? Yeah. Well, I read once in a story where a tough guy out west used to put a knock in his gut for every guy he rubbed out. So I thought it was a good idea. Count him. Two, four, eight, twelve. Twelve bump off? Sure. Okay, I'm told. Now listen, Brian. There's a dame I want by. I mean, you can't use a rod. Why not? I think the neighbors might hear the shot. And anyhow, I want it to look like a burglar. How about Jack? No, I got a better plan. There's a steel bar in the closet off the bedroom in this junk. I'll give you a key to the spot, and you can let yourself in and hide in the closet until the dame comes in. And then you can beat her ears in with a steel, steel bar. How about a rod? Does she have a rod? I don't want her to blow me down. Well, uh, there's an old gun in her desk, but she don't know how to use it, and anyhow, it ain't loaded. I loaded it myself a week ago. Well, who is this dame you're so anxious to get bumped? What's it to you? I'm paying you for the job, ain't it? Yeah. Well, how much? Well, how much would you expect for a job like this? Well, here's the setup. I gotta get back to Toledo and I gotta get a front. I can't go in there like this and I wanna get there fast. 
I think my switch is giving me the double, see? So I'll do the job for two fees. I think 200 bucks will see me through. That's a little high. Take it or leave it. Okay, I'll take it. Half now and half on, shall we say, delivery of a body? All right. Ain't got that cash on me right this minute. How do I know you won't take a powder on me? You want it like a welcome mask? Well, when do I get the payoff? Then? When do you pull the job? Any time you say. Okay. This afternoon. Well, this afternoon it is. Do I get the payoff this afternoon, too? Yeah. Where? Here? No, meet me at the corner of 8th and Vermont. I'll pay off there. Okay. How do I get into the joint? I need a key. It's at 1830 South Henderson. 1830 South Henderson. Yeah. Okay, what is it? A bungalow, a court, or what? A big stucco house. You go out there now and let yourself in, hide in the closet. She'll be back from our luncheon engagement about 2.30. And when she comes in, let her have it. Okay. And I'll see you at 8th and Vermont in two hours. You see that you have the door with you. Don't worry, I will. <laughs> Brian leaves on his errand of death, passed him, unable to contain himself, dropped in his closed apartment. Hello, Daddy. What's on your mind? Yeah, that little news for you. They couldn't wait. Yeah? What is it? Just come by to tell you it won't be long now. What do you mean, it won't be long now? No, the committing suicide this afternoon. Yeah? On the level? On the level. When are you going to do it? I ain't going to do it. What do you mean? Yeah, guy's doing it for me. A guy's doing it for you, huh? Yeah. You ain't got the nerve to do it yourself. I thought you was a man. Why, you sniveling welcher, I'm sick and tired of you. I thought you loved me. I thought you loved me enough for anything. You had not even got the nerve to bump your wife off. Bullet fast on the tough guy. Bullet fast on the big baby. I've been asking for this for a long time, bro, and now you're gonna get it. A nice, healthy smack in the kitchen. Oh, sugar, really? Don't hear me, that's what I mean. How long, you Meanwhile, Buckeye Brian lets himself into the Bascom residence, pockets the guns in the desk drawer, finds a steel bar in the closet, and is waiting for the door when Mrs. Bascom returns home. Well, well, and here comes the victim herself. Step right into the parlor to the spider in the fly. Who's <laughs> there? You ask me, Mrs. Bascom. Who are you? I'm Buckeye Brian, ma'am. A tough killer from Toledo, Ohio. What are you doing in my house? I've got a date to murder you. What's the matter with you? Are you crazy or something? No, I'm quite sane. Your husband, your model husband, has just employed me to bump you off for $200. You get out of here right now. See, here's the key to your house. Your husband gave it to me. What? This iron bar I'm holding was in the closet, just where he told me it would be. I'm supposed to bash in your skull with it. <laughs> it's frightening when you talk like that. If you don't leave the house this minute, I'll get my gun and... Don't trouble yourself. I already had your gun in my pocket, see? Oh. Couldn't have done you much good. Your husband thoughtfully unloaded it so that you couldn't defend yourself. Oh. You must be insane. My husband hired you to... Oh, that's fantastic. Well, it's the finest man in the world. He's utterly devoted to me. That's what you think. Well, he'll teach you to talk that way in a minute. What do you mean? Here he comes up the walk right now. What? Sure. See through that window? I want you to go into the bedroom there, Mrs. Bassman, and close the door. I've got to see him alone. Oh, I certainly will not. Stop pushing me. Oh, Mrs. Bassman, listen to me. If you value your life, do as I say. I'm your friend. Get that in, get into that bedroom and stay there like court. Oh. Please don't make any noise. You must trust me. But, but why? I don't even... Quiet. Here he comes. Hello, Bassam. Thought you were going to meet me at 8th and Vermont. You, you ain't. Sure, she's home. I just pulled it. Oh. Don't worry, I made it look like a robbery. They won't hang up on you. Well, it ain't that. I, I, I changed my mind. Well, this is a fine time to change your mind. Yeah. I guess it was really her I loved all the time. It was that tramp flow that talked me into this. Oh, I get it. Another day, man. Huh? Uh, are, you, are you sure she's dead? I, is there any chance of saving her? Not a chance. When I swing a hunk of steel like this, they're bumped off a key. Put that thing away. Put it away. Don't wave it in front of me like that. Well, the job's done, Bassam. Now, if you're slipping to pay off, I'll be on my way. To pay off? You expect me to pay you for murdering my wife? Oh, well, will you, huh? I'll get you for this. Don't stretch from the end of a rope. What are you grabbing that phone for? I'm going to tell the police. Ha, ha, ha. Call the police. That's a good one. And then try and on that bar and cover me with a guest, see? Don't get too excited, Bassam. Save yourself the effort of phoning. What do you mean? Looks like a couple of dicks coming up to the house now. I guess your wife screamed so loud when I let her have it. My neighbors called the cops. Uh, it is the police. 
That is, that's a squad car, my friend. You washed up, Brian. You bought a one-way ticket to the hot place when you murdered my Mildred. Yeah, what will a jury say when I tell my story? They won't believe you. What about Jack Smith? Uh, he won't squeal. No, he won't. Uh, Just a minute, I'm coming. Billy is always a man. He just burned my wife. Hello, boys. Don't move, Brian. I'll let you have it. I think you better give me that gun, Mr. Bascom. I'll take charge of things now. Don't worry, Bascom. I just want to produce the body. I believe that's customary in cases like this, isn't it, Inspector? Maybe a corpus or something like that? That's right. Will you come out now, Mrs. Bascom? No. Oh, are you all right? Is it really you? Oh, my God. What's this all about, Jim? Who are these men? What's this about having me murdered? I, I'm hoping it's you, Doc. Yeah. I don't know, honey. I don't know. It's the only thing that matters is it's all right. Well, these introductions are in order, Mrs. Jackson. I'm Inspector Davidson, a Los Angeles homicide squad. And this man here, whom your husband knows as Buckeye Bryan, and whom we hired to murder you, is one of our most valued assistants, Detective Lieutenant Tommy Bryan. Right. Well, you double... Now, Bassam, no, no, I... Oh, he's still oh. Double resistant officer, Bassam. Although in this case, I want to thank you. I've been wanting an opportunity to smack you one ever since I met you. But the talk with you, Inspector? All right. Stick out your arms, Bascom. Hey, this is a frame up. I don't know what you're talking about. Something's there you go, Bascom. Oh, you ain't got a thing on me. Not a thing. Oh, you're forgetting your friend, Fred Jack Sneed. What about him? Well, Bascom, your friend Sneed came to us and tipped us off. My disguise of Buckeye Bryan was the result. When I left your restaurant an hour ago, I called Inspector Davidson and asked him to meet me here. In the meantime, Bill Clark, Con Dapper, and Ryan are staked out at Ace and Vermont waiting for you. But you saved us that trouble by walking into our arms right here. The only thing I regret is that you didn't pay off. That blood money would have looked good in evidence. But we'll put you away in any case. Your friend Sneed, you see, will be the state star witness when they bring you to trial for conspiracy to commit murder. No, no, no. The frame up, you can't do it. No, 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 no. You don't believe him, do you? You're trying to railroad me. It's a lie. The whole thing's a dirty double-crossed lie. <laughs> you don't believe your daddy would do such a thing? Do you, Mildred, honey? <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what to believe. That was crime in the eyes of the law, was not very great, horrible as it undoubtedly is to every decent citizen listening tonight. We sent him to the court and tried him and found him guilty. But the most the law could give him was a year in the county jail. He served his term, was released, and went back to the bewildered Mrs. Baston, who, trusting soul, to this day does not believe that her husband plotted to kill her. Bascom will not try it again. He learned his lesson from the vitriolic flow, who wanted him not as much as she desired him to prove how much she wanted her. Had our homicide squad not been on its toes, they would have been a murder to solve instead of one to prevent. And as I said at starting, the primary function of your police is to prevent crimes rather than solve them. For if we efficiently prevent them through our own activities and the education of the public through the futility of crime, ergo, we will have no more crimes to solve. Thank you, Chief Davis. Police officials of leading western cities and counties have enthusiastically adopted Rio Grande Tax gasoline because they have proved by actual tests that this gasoline operates police and emergency cars at a lower cost per mile yet creates greater speed and power than any other gasoline. You will find in your own car that you enjoy faster acceleration and make greater speed with cracked gasoline. But such speed is doubly dangerous. For safety's sake, police warn you to stay within speed limits and keep the extra power of Rio Grande cracked in reserve for driving emergencies. High speeds also endanger your motor. For most motor oils break down when your engine speeds up. To protect your motor from damage at all times, even at highest speed, Rio Grande dealers offer you Sinclair, Pennsylvania, and Sinclair Opaline motor oil. Both of these famous brands are refined by a method as revolutionary as the Sinclair cracking process for gasoline. 
All useless petroleum jelly is extracted from Sinclair motor oil to ensure a protecting film of oil that won't break down. The Rio Grande dealer can supply you with Sinclair Pennsylvania or Sinclair opening motor oil, absolutely jelly-free, in tamper-proof, extra major cans. Please calling all cars, attention all cars. A cancellation broadcast 103. The Guardian of Trump murder. The sex in this case is now in custody. That's all. Rose and Clayton. <laughs>